In this video, we're going to talk about how to run for state representative. If you've ever thought about doing that, please stay with me and listen to this entire video because I got some invaluable information to share with you about what you need to know and how you win an election. What we're going to cover in this video is how to develop a powerful network of energetic volunteers and stout supporters, how to craft a campaign message, how to study your jurisdiction so that you're running a really smart campaign, how to disseminate that message to the people who need to hear it, and we're going to touch a little bit on how you raise the money to pay for that advertising plan. Let's start with the basics. You need a stout network of two kinds of people if you want to get a campaign for state representative off the ground. You are the source of the first one, and I'm going to tell you how to find the people who are in the second one. Let's start with your own. Chances are that you have been active in your community, or you know people who have been active in your community, and that you may already know some of these people. So inventory the people that you might put in the category of family and close friends and relatives who might live near you. And also note the people who know you and like you, the people you've met in civic and charitable organizations where you may have served or people you may have encountered, a job that you've held. That's the first source. Now, if you don't know and you can't think of all of those people that you do know, there are three places I would suggest that you check. The most likely to have the most names of people you are active with and know well is in your mobile contact list. Thumb through it and look for people whose faces you would recognize if you met them on the street or if, whose voice you would know is theirs. People that you know well enough that when you call them and ask them to be a volunteer in your campaign, they know immediately your voice and who's calling to ask. Now the second place that you can go to find people who know you is take a look at your friends list on Facebook. Chances are that you've connected, if you've had a Facebook for a while, chances are you've connected with people that go way down deep into your past who might be able to give you a campaign contribution or if they live near you, might be willing to hand out your literature going door to door. The third place to look is take a look at the people who are on your LinkedIn contact list. Sometimes the people who are on that list are opinion leaders or people who have influence in their field of work who can also be helpful to you. Now, there's a secondary network that is essential in a political campaign. Most state representatives run as a Republican or Democrat. That means you probably have a party apparatus in your district with elected leadership of that party. And if you can solicit and secure their support, it will help you get your name on the ballot and run a good campaign. It doesn't mean you have to have them, but it's a lot easier to win if you do have some party leaders who are willing to support you. The second place to go look are people who belong to your party who may already be elected officials in your jurisdiction. Now keep this in mind. If they already hold elected office, they've been through a campaign. They've done advertising. They've won an election. They got a better idea, if you're running for the first time, they got a better idea how to do it than you may. And if you've been active in politics before, you probably already know some of these people and securing their endorsement in your race puts you one step forward. Third place to go and look are civic and community leaders in your jurisdiction that want a good relationship or need a good relationship with their state representative, particularly people who serve underserved communities, board members of the United Way, for example. That organization provides services to people who can't otherwise find them. The United Way tends to have a lot of stout people on its board of directors. You've got a business community in your jurisdiction. Talk to the head of the Chamber of Commerce. Expand your network and the network of people you know. There are a couple of other places I might suggest that you develop a strong network of support. They would include the leaders of ethnic 
groups in your jurisdiction, and they would include people who exert some influence from outside the district whose voice matters inside your district. That's the way you develop a network. And I'll just say this, your mission is a lot easier if you have this stout support before you start your race, rather than trying to obtain it halfway through the campaign when time is getting scarce. Second thing to know is you really do need to know a lot about your jurisdiction. And I mean, not just where people live, but you really should look at past turnout patterns to get an idea of how many people are expected to vote in the race that you're running in. You really need to know the partisan identification of the electorate to properly plan a campaign. And if you can get a hold of it, there's a certain amount of demographic information that comes in very handy. Take a look at the age brackets of people who live in your jurisdiction, whether it skews young or old. Take a look at the income levels of those. You can tell whether it's an upper class neighborhood or a middle class or perhaps a lower class neighborhood by looking at that. Take a look at the race, ethnicity of the people who live in your jurisdiction. That helps you plan a campaign. Uh, take a look at the education level in your district because people with college degrees tend to vote a little differently than people who don't have them. Now, if you're having trouble finding this information on your jurisdiction, put your question in the comments section on this video and I'll get back to you with a helpful place where you can easily find that information. The third essential component of your campaign for state representative is this. You're asking people to give you power. You're going to be voting on a state budget. You're going to be deciding how that pie is distributed to various people who are used to getting a piece of that budget. School districts, the needy, the, the people who need health care, the bureaucracy that makes state government run on time, the state employees. You're asking for power that may affect the quality of life of people who live in your district. Therefore, they're going to expect that you're going to tell them a little bit about the problems that you're going to fix, the inequities that you're going to take care of, the injustice that you may want to correct, a wrong that you want to write, some policy initiative that you're going to push for in the state legislature that will improve the quality of life for people in your jurisdiction. That is the most essential thing that you can tell your constituents so that if they ask you, why do you want the job? You've got a good answer to it. Now, there are other components of a good campaign message. During the course of your campaign, you ought to let people know that you got your feet on the ground, that you've done some real things in your life that qualify you to make judgments about who gets what in the state budget, that qualify you to cast votes on things that affect the system of justice and crime laws and everything else that legislators decide. You should tell them or convey to them sometimes through pictures if you have to, something about your values and your moral code. Pictures that say, this is important to me because you're in the picture serving veterans. Pictures that say, I care about kids because you're in a picture reading to a couple of small children on a couch. That is a great way to let people know that your values are in sync with theirs. We've talked about the issue positioning. I'll mention a couple of more. Voters are very cynical about the motivation of anybody who seeks office in this day and age. They assume that they just want to see their name in the paper and get on cable TV or go make a much, bunch of noise. Is there a story about something that happened in your life that lets voters know they can trust you to make a decision on their behalf? Something that made you passionate about fixing a particular problem and why you're running for the legislature because it gives you the power to fix that problem. If you can convey a story like that, it's easier for voters to pull the lever for you. Final thing I'll mention is, in all likelihood, you'll face an opponent, either in a primary or a general election. At some point, voters really do appreciate you making the choice easy and simple for them to understand. Why you and not the other person running against you? That or the, those are the components of a campaign message. I'll touch upon three other things that are essential to any campaign for state representative. 
your advertising, your budget, and your fundraising plan. Unless you intend to go door to door and knock on every door in your jurisdiction and campaign that way, that's a useful thing. But if you live in a jurisdiction where there are 50 or 60,000 doors to knock on, it takes years to knock on that many doors. And therefore, you will also need some paid advertising in your campaign somewhere along the way. So. What are the forms of paid advertising that you can use? Well, certainly there's social media and you can post there for free, but Facebook and YouTube also give you the means to cheaply advertise on Facebook and YouTube and reach the voters that you need to reach. Certainly there's something called digital advertising. If you don't believe me, open your cell phone and go to a newspaper site and you're going to see all sorts of digital ads. People buy those and they pay for them and the advertising firms that do digital ads can refine them down as far as certain neighborhoods and certain streets. There is a uniform means of communicating with people in campaigns like this called persuasion mail. It is very commonly used pictures and words that enhance your brand and let people know your qualifications and why you are running. In some cases, there are certain kinds of TV that can be very useful to you, something we call over the top. There's also connected TV, sometimes cable television, in rare cases commercial. It probably won't be in your budget, but if you live in a strange jurisdiction, it could be. Now, you need to decide what you're gonna spend on each of these because during the course of a campaign, you need a budget and you need to abide that budget. You can't do a smart budget unless you know how much you need to spend to disseminate your message. So once you figure that out, then put it in a budget. Add to that budget, in addition to your paid advertising, what you're gonna to need to spend on staff, headquarters, volunteer support, food for the volunteers, and then you have a campaign budget. Now, follow it and abide it. Don't spend too much money early because if you do, you will run out of money at the end. Finally, there's fundraising. There are lots of ways to raise money, and I'll just name off a few. You can do text messages to people asking them for money. I know, because I get 20 of them a day. You can send people emails asking them for money, because I know I get 40 of those a day. But there are other fundamental ways. One is you're allowed to ask for money, and it's okay for you to call your family, friends, and relatives, and opinion leaders, and stakeholders in your district, and ask them to contribute to your campaign. You can ask a friend or an opinion leader who has a lot of influence in the community to help you raise money by collecting donations on your behalf. That is called surrogate fundraising. You can send people letters in the mail saying, this is why I'm running. Would you please contribute to my campaign? Finally, there are organized events, uh, cocktail parties, small ones perhaps, but they're very useful, or neighborhood parties where a friend of yours invites 15 or 20 of their friends who give five or 10 or $25 at the door to spend an hour or two with you. There are dinner parties, more high-end, where you get opinion leaders to invite five couples who are pretty well healed, and you use that dinner occasion to ask them for a large donation. Finally, there are what we call celebrity events, where you may know a noted speaker or a noted author or someone who's famous in their field, who has some fame and glory to their own name. Invite them as a special guest to your celebrity event. Charge people a small admission price. Put them on the stage, let them entertain people, and everybody goes home happy. I may have mentioned that I have a free gift for you. How to create a campaign message is where I go into great detail about how to develop a message right for you in the year you're running. Click on it, watch it, it will make you a better candidate.